Good morning. Thank you for joining us on YouTube and on Facebook this morning. Um, I wanted to remind everybody that next week is our celebration dinner reimagined on October 18th. So please make sure to stop by here at the church um, to drop off your um, celebration dinner reimagined uh, bag with the groceries for Salvation Army um, based on their needs list that was provided. And um, also, if you can make sure to bring your estimate of giving cards, as I stated last week, we have had two families that have stepped forward and together they have pledged $10,000 if we can get 75 estimate of giving cards back during our financial stewardship campaign. So please, um, please help us to meet this goal so that we do not miss out on this incredible opportunity that God has blessed us with. Um, also, I believe Kim, last count I had was we have 535 people that have expressed interest, or 525 children that have expressed interest in participating in our trunk or treat. Um, even if we have a third of them arrive, that's still likely going to be over 200, easily over 200 kids. Um, so if you have any candy that you'd like to donate, please um, contact the church office. Um, let us know when you'll be stopping by and we'll uh, make sure to help put it in with the collections for this, um, for this event. Um, we've been getting some incredible response from the community uh, across the board. So um, God has really blessed this mission or this ministry as we've been reaching out and sharing God's love with the community. So please help us in doing this. Um, outside, um, also on in the Herald, I believe that went out last week. You should have seen that we will be doing an All Saints Remembrance during our uh, November first service. Um, please, if you can um, scan some pictures, take pictures of a picture that you have of someone who's someone you know who has been a part of your faith journey and um, faith walk um, that you'd like to remember during this time as we celebrate the great cloud of witnesses that has supported and taught us the faith. Um, if you can please make sure to send that to me or to the church office and we'll make sure it gets in. Um, if you do not have the capability of scanning or emailing um, those pictures, please make sure to call into the church office. We can scan them here and make sure that they get included. Without any further delay, let us prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin.
We confess that we, we do, do not trust, trust your abundance, abundance and, we and we deny your presence in our lives. lives. We, we place our hope in ourselves and rely, and rely on our own efforts. efforts. We, we fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We, we abuse your good, good creation for our own benefit. benefit. We fear we difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. us. We, we sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all, and, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us sing the hymn. So day of joy and light, O balm for cure and sadness, most beautiful, most bright. On you the high and low we go, all ages joined in two. Sing holy, holy, holy to the great Quadriu. Creation, the light first had its birth. On you for our salvation, Christ rose from depths of earth. On you, O Lord, victorious, the Spirit sent from hell. And thus on you, most glorious, the threefold light was given. Today on weary nations the heavenly manna falls to holy commotion the silver trumpet calls where gospel light is flowing with joy and radiant beams and living water flowing with soul. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you.
pray. Lord of the faith, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 25th chapter. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you, for you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like the heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The strong of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, the rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. He will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The The Lord makes me me lie lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of death, the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
you anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Philippians, the fourth chapter. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Sintich to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in a parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call on those who had been invited to the ban wedding banquet. But they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My, fax, my, my ox and my fatted calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. And while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroying those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so that the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see, in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Good morning, everyone. As you can see, this week we're talking a little bit about gifts. In our lesson for today, Jesus is talking about a a king who goes into who goes and throws a party for all his special guests and they refuse to come they refuse his gift and that reminds me of another gift that we are often given 
and we don't always think about. So what I wanted to show you is I've got a gift here. So I'm going to unwrap it here. So let's see. Oh, what we got? What we got? A water bottle with water in it. Why would someone give me a water bottle? Why would God give me water? Is it important? Yeah, it's important for me to drink it. It's important. It's fun to play with. Splash my kids with. Turn on the hose. It's, but one of our most important gifts that comes from God comes from water. It's called our baptism. And in our lesson for today, we see that some people often reject their gift of baptism. In a couple weeks, we're going to be asking a couple of uh, a couple of teenagers in the church if they will use this gift of baptism that God gives them. And it makes me wonder how. Are you using your gift of baptism? Are you just letting it sit here in the pretty water bottle and letting it continue to grow? Are you just letting, are you drinking it and, and continually finding nurture from it? Are you allowing it to, are you using it to splash your friends and have some fun and teach them about who Jesus is? Or are you wanting to reject it and ignore it and just let it sit by itself not being used. Jesus challenges us to use our baptism to walk wet. It's a little chilly or I try dumping the water on myself but to remember that as we walk in this world as we go around and we share the gospel with our friends and our neighbors that we are called to live out our baptism with everything we have and share God's good news with all the world. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we want to thank you for this gift of baptism. We want to thank you for the opportunity to gather in your presence and to be washed in your life-giving water. Lord, when we hear passages like this about gifts being given, help us to remember the gift that you have given to us so freely. The gift of life everlasting with you. The gift of, our, of your forgiveness to us. Life, forgiveness, grace poured out abundantly for all. Lord, we pray all of this in your son's name. Amen. We've all had that dream, haven't we? The one where you're sh where you are sure that you have woken up and you're ready you get ready for school and run out the door in a rush to get there. You finally arrive, run to your locker, worrying you're going to be late to class. You look down and realize that you're standing in the school wearing your pajamas or worse. And there's the whole school laughing at you, making fun of you, thinking that you've completely lost it, only to wake up in your bed, sweating like crazy, heart pounding, and realizing you're safe. This is exactly how I feel trying to preach this passage today. Because if there's one passage in the Bible that I dislike to preach on, it is definitely, this is definitely one of them. Even Martin Luther himself hated preaching on this lesson when it came up every three years. So, here we go. Today's lesson, as we know, is part of a long series of teachings that take place in the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus has already engaged the chief priests and the scribes and the elders He's already enraged them to the point that they are angry that he has driven out their money, their money changers and money makers. 
and now has already told three parables they know are targeted at them. And here he goes with yet another one. I'm thinking they maybe have had one of, they're having one of those high school nightmare experiences too. As their sins against the people are laid bare before them in these teachings, not directly pointing the finger and calling them to account for their mistreatment of the people, but if you are reading carefully and listening carefully, it is still exposure to, for them, to those who know where to look. The priests, scribes, and elders all feel ashamed, and their, and their reaction is that of a cornered animal. Tells you all you need to know about how this story will end. as the priests, scribes, and elders are again brought up in another parable, one where they again are shown to be the ones not responding to the king. And Jesus opens this passage talking about a king who's invited all in his court to come and join them in the wedding feast. Those invited have uh, had other things to do, and ignore the invitation, even going so far as to mistreat, abuse, and kill the servants of the king in response to his invitation. Now, you, you have to remember, this story is being told in an honor-shame society. It means that the culture that this is being told in, the, and the culture in which Jesus is talking about, is an honor-shame set up, where no matter what, there is an accounting of whether you're honoring the person or shaming them. And here we see not only have they killed and abused the servants of the master, but they have dishonored the master by refusing to show the king the honor that he is due. This dishonor by the court is punished by death, let alone the fact that they have taken a life in the process of disrespecting the king. In turn, the king's disrespect is what Jesus is equating with the priests, the elders, and the temple during this time, elders of the temple during this time, calling them to learn from this teaching rather than re react out of fear as they have thus far. So the king retaliates as only a king can and sends the servants this time into the streets to fetch anyone and everyone to the wedding feast. This signifies the grace extended beyond that of just the priests, elders, and scribes, but the grace extended to all of God's creation. Then we have the part where I wish it wasn't there the part where the guest shows who didn't wear the wedding robe. This seems like a weird thing to include in this passage at first glance, and especially for me as a child raised by a blue-collar family, it's outright offensive to me, making me think, what if he didn't have anything good enough to wear? What if he couldn't afford the wedding garment that the king is so upset about? Is he being punished for not having what others did? But then I dug a bit deeper. And the scholars are torn on this passage. Some literature agrees with the ideas expressed here, saying the man's unwillingness to show the respect needed to the king by dressing in a nicer way, going home and changing before coming to the palace for the wedding, is what was called for, and he hadn't done that. Not necessarily that it had to be formal wedding garment, but he had to go home and change out of his work attire. Is what gets him thrown out of the darkness, out into the darkness, is that he didn't take the time to acknowledge and honor the host. Others claim that the garment 
was provided by the king. And the man had refused to take one, hoping to get by on his own merits. Either way, the guest is not willing to accept the gifts given by the king. He instead relies on his own ability rather than the grace extended to him. Even when he's questioned about it, he doesn't give a defense. He stands there speechless, hoping that the armor of his clothing will be enough. We all put on an armor of some type, like this. For some, it's tough skin. For some, it's sarcasm. For some, it's putting on a facade that everything is fine, covering up that everything isn't. And like in our dreams of arriving at school and our PJs, we discover throughout our lives that this is not enough. No armor we create will be able to protect us. It's only through the grace given by God through Christ Jesus that we are protected. It is in the death-defying love that breaks down those facades and the illusion of perfection that shows the imperfections that we have and our true need for Christ in our lives. Everything else is a defense mechanism. They are responses to our own vulnerability that closes us off to the fullness of the grace extended to us through Christ's death and resurrection, the gifts that the King has offered to us as we were invited to the wedding feast. This is not something to be afraid of, but something to be grateful for, something to honor and respect through response to God's grace through service, through faith, through stewardship, through acts of love. Because God first loves us. And it's for that I say, thanks be to God. Our dwelling. When the name 
generations work to change war into peace. And the stranger is accepted as a neighbor. We see God here by our side, walking our way. We see God here by our side, walking our way. Let us confess our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Jesus, God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated, restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running streams, waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, As you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, Let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see their need. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. This morning, we lift up to you and pray for Ken Fielder, Mabel Kinder, uh, Tristan Barker, Anderson Hayes, Jean Eitzel, Carol Heitzman, Connie Lynch, Mary Lou Smith, Nancy Arps, Viola Treadway, Pat Collins, Kathy Teets, and Carl Breitenstein. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence, assure us with your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold us in your loving arms, all for whom we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's love endures forever. 
The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. We, we possess, possess nothing, nothing, not, not even, even ourselves. ourselves. We, we are, are just stewards of the our Creator. And, and all, all that, that we have is a gift from, from God. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will no, not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be enough room to store it. Lord, Lord forgive, forgive us, us for our selfishness. selfishness. We, we think, think that our security lies in our own hands, but that, that is only, only an illusion. illusion. Help, Help us to seek you and your kingdom. kingdom. Gracious God, enable us to be good stewards of all your blessings and help us to use our time talents minds and resources wisely and to your glory remembering that only through you though we may be absent in body yet we are united through your holy spirit rejoicing to see the morale and firmness of faith in christ through this church amen during this time of rejoicing in Zion's firmness of faith, I invite you to listen to the words of Kim Hanley. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes of, of things that I do. You guys know me for the past year and a half as the face of Trunk or Treat. But this, you only see what the finished product is. And what goes on behind the scenes, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about that. Um, this year has been challenging. We've had the pandemic, and Pastor Jen asked me to think of things online that I could do for, for Trunk or Treat, and I thought, it's never going to work. I'm not, I'm, it's, I, I can't do that. So I sat for one day, and I said, <laughs> I said, these ideas just kept coming, and I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. Hebrews 13, 6 teaches us, let your faith be stronger than your fear. I had to do that this year. I had to say, everything that you're used to has to be thrown out the window, and we can do trunk or treat online. So I created the Zion Lutheran Truck or Treat page. It's gotten more activity than I thought it would. <laughs> would. Um, it's, it's full of crafts and other ideas and, and, and um, readings and a little history about trick or treat itself. Um, and it's, it's really been a fun experience. And I'm asking you to let your faith be stronger than your fear during this stewardship campaign because it takes all of us to create all of this. It's not just me or it's not just the um, other people that do the Easter egg hunt or the gingerbread uh, workshop or even um, the other things that go on like godly play all the children's ministries, it takes all of you. And you have to let your faith be stronger than your fear. We may be in the background, but it takes all of us to do what we do. So um, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, as you're thinking about the stewardship campaign and, and what you can do, think about the outreach programs that we do for the children. Think about all of the things that go on, all the things that you don't see that go on behind the scenes because this has taken a life of its own. Um, I've called um, businesses that have stepped up that I never thought would, would step up. Um, Kroger has stepped up. Grandpa Joe's candy shop has stepped up. Frisch's gave us 720 suckers, and all I had to say was, we're doing it. 
um, they let their faith be stronger than their fear. So I'm telling you to let your faith be stronger than your fear as you address what you're going to do with the stewardship campaign. Thank you. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again By good counsel's guide uphold you with the shepherd's care and fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet. Till we meet. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Holy wings securely hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet. Till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When my sparrows thick and brown. Unfailing arms around you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. Till we meet again. Till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet. Till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Because God first loves us, let us depart in peace to follow, follow Jesus' footsteps, footsteps by inviting others to experience God's love. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. <laughs>